just as capitalists were developing employer-employee relationships in feudalism, so it has been now for quite a while that worker co-ops are emerging in capitalism. Here in the United States, it's remarkable. Hundreds of them have been formed and developed in recent years. And the answer is very similar to what happened in feudalism with the early capitalists. People are discovering that they are unwilling and unable to continue as employees in capitalist enterprises. The pay they get, the conditions they work under, are simply unattractive, unbearable, as the economy goes through its crashes, such as the one in 2008, as we suffer levels of inequality we haven't seen for a 100 years in this country. People are sick and tired and fed up, and the signs of that are everywhere. And one of the new interesting ways of acting on that has been for people to form worker co-ops, alternative ways of living and working uh, in this society. It's still a capitalist society, but within it are the seeds, the seed institutions that are moving beyond it, just as the urban capitalists moved beyond the feudalism which gave them their strength. I also think we're getting to the point where there are enough cooperative activities, not just worker co-ops, which is what we stress, but other kinds of co-ops, consumer co-ops, sales co-ops, ways in which people are learning that the competitive capitalist profit-driven system is not only not the only way to organize an economy, it's not the one we want. I think we're ready then to take the step that we can learn from the capitalists as they came out of feudalism. It's time for us to organize the co-ops, bring them together in a political project. What does that mean? It means grouping together the actual co-ops that are developing, together with all the people who support and welcome the development of co-ops, together with the labor movement, the unions, so that they can see the co-ops as a force in society to strengthen them in their struggles with capitalists to get better wages and working conditions for workers. So co-ops plus the people who support the co-op movement plus the labor movement. That is the basis to form a new political organization, just as the emerging capitalists did. And in the same way, we can recognize that the co-ops are already paying taxes to a government. The new co-ops developing are paying taxes to a government. The trade unions are paying taxes in their direct and indirect ways. The people who support the co-op movement are paying taxes. But here is the issue and the rub as we learn from the transition from feudalism to capitalism. We're all paying taxes to a government that is, in fact, helping capitalists, not worker co-ops. There are hundreds of laws and regulations that make it difficult to form a co-op, that make it difficult to raise money for a co-op, that inhibit the co-op. At the same time, the government we're paying taxes to is providing subsidy upon subsidy to private capitalist corporations that a year and a half ago gave the, ta the capitalist corporations the biggest tax cut they've ever seen, which is a support for them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's long overdue that the government we're already paying taxes to do something it should have done a long time ago, namely give the kinds of support to the development of worker co-ops that they have always given to the development of capitalist enterprises. But that's not going to happen because it's fair and reasonable and just, any more than the capitalists within feudalism got a fair, reasonable, or just deal from the kings they had to deal with. You have to have the political strength to make the state you're already funding help you.